Hey guys, it's MJ, the student actuary, and we're going to be talking about the economic influences on investment markets. This is chapter 20 of subject CA1. And in this video, oops, we're going to be looking at interest rates, bond yields, and the level of the equity and property market. And this is an important chapter because when you answer a CA1 exam question, you need to consider the economic environment and the various influences on your, uh, in your answer. So if they ask something about property, you sometimes have to mention how the equity market would react and how that would then you know, influence the property market again. So there's a whole bunch of these factors that have an influence on each other. And yeah, we're going we're gonna to have a look at that. So the very first thing is let's look at interest rates. And I've made other videos on, I think, in subject CT1 that talks about the basics of interest rates. But I assume that if you're doing CA1, you're quite comfortable with you know, the whole theory behind interest rates. But let's just have a quick little uh, recap. Um, interest rates are determined by government policy. And they're used for, for two main things. Um, you can make the interest rate very low, and this will encourage economic growth. Or you can make the interest rate quite high, and this will control inflation. Um, you can also use the interest rate to manage the exchange rate. And what you want to do is, it's, it's kind of like a balancing act. And I know of recently, um, in the world economy, companies, not companies, countries in Europe have, and in America, have been making the interest rates very, very low. And this is to encourage economic growth. But inflation is not increasing as expected, and they're actually getting stagflation, and it's, it's just going a little bit haywire in the economic environment at the moment. Um, it's very good to read up on this, because, like I said, in the exam, they, they love asking these questions that consider the environment and good questions that they like to do are on current situations. So learn all about what's happening. I know Greece at the moment is in economic chaos. So brush up on what's happening there. Um, bond yields, these things are very interesting. Um, just a quick recap, a bond is when a, a company or a country um, borrows money and the bond yield is the amount of money that or the interest rate that they'll pay back. Um, it's very interesting to note the short-term interest rates and how they compare to long-term interest rates and if you understand bond yields you can make a lot of money because the bond market is way bigger than the stock market. So there's and it's much more liquid, much more activities happening here. But you're with bond yields, the important things to remember is, you know, what is this relationship to inflation? How, what's this relationship to the short-term interest rates that are set by the government? Um, remember, with your bond yields is bonds, when a, when a company, um, well, when a country uh, issues bonds, it increases its fiscal deficit. And that's something that countries like to keep under control because, like I said, with Greece, that's gone totally, um, you know, haywire. And you can see how it's been affecting the exchange rate of various cur uh, currencies. So it's important that, you know, government does keep this all under control. And yeah, so that's bond yields. Um, and yeah, I've just made just a little bit of notes on it. So the fiscal deficit, um, they can issue bonds. And... In the past, well, why Greece is such a big issue is normally if a country issues too many bonds um, and they cannot repay their debt, they simply print more money and this, um, with this more money, they can pay off their, their debt and it weakens the exchange rate, but they get rid of their debt. In Greece's situation, they cannot do that because they're part of the euro, so they don't have the authority to just print money. And... That's why there is this chaotic situation that's going on there now. Um, also recently in the news has been the, the equity market in China, I think has dropped 
25% since, since last year or something. Um, it's it's kind of scary. Um, the level of the equity market, what, you know, how do we determine the return that you're going to get on the equity market? Well, it looks at the real interest rate um, because that's the substitute. If the interest rate is very high, then we're going to expect the equity market to be high or low. Um, that's a question you want to ask yourself. It's going to make it high because now um, investors will demand um, a greater return, but it could cause problems in the long term as people will put their money in the, the money market because if they're getting such good returns there and it's much safer. So that's why I said everything that pushes something up pushes something else, moves something else around, which could therefore bring this and bring it back down in the future. That was kind of confusing, but this this economic stuff does get confusing, how you can change one thing and it doesn't just make the desired result. There is this overlapping, okay? Another thing that affects the equity markets is the expectations of inflation. If inflation is expected to be high, then investors are going to want um, higher returns in order to compensate for inflation weakening their real value of their money. Um, also, how investors perceive uh, equity risk. So, if they think that you know the market's really risky at the moment, they will demand a higher return. Um, it's also linked to the real level of economic growth uh, because if you kind of think of it, the equity market represents the economy's growth, and that's why it it does get kind of weird or unsettling when you see the equity market increasing much greater than the economy's growth. It means Either the government is pocketing some of their money or the stock market is being uh, pushed up due to greed and just, you know, herd mentality. Um, or there could be some expectations on the currency movements. So you can see this is what, this is why CA1 gets difficult because they're going to ask you a question. It's going to be worth a lot of marks, say 10 marks, and you're only going to get half a mark per point you say. So you, if it's 10 marks, you have to say 20 things. And you can see you're only learning like five points here. So you need to say, you know, maybe four things per point um, and you're restricted for time. So like I said, it is a difficult exam and this is where it starts getting a little bit complicated. Um, also, the level of the equity market is influenced by uh, the supply factors. I mean, if a lot of people start selling shares, dumping it, you know, then supply and demand uh, will bring down the equity market if a lot of people want to buy stocks but not a lot of people are selling it then you know factors will push it up then uh, political climate um, you know investors are very very worried about the government if something weirds happening they do tend to flee um, and go and rather invest their money in another country um, it also determines if an overseas if another market's doing very very well then the one argument is that your stock market or your local stock market will also do well because they correlated. But then there's the other argument that your stock, stock market would do worse because people will pull out of your market and go put the money in that market. So again, that's another thing where the answer can be both like, you know, if an overseas equity market does well, what will happen to your current market? It's not a, oh, it will go up this is the reason, or oh, it will go down, this is the reason. You have to give both sides of the story and both scenarios. Um, and then, you know, there's just institutional cash flow, taxation, and alternative investments. Um, this, let's just talk very quickly about alternative investments. So my opinion at the moment is that the stock market, at least in my home country, South Africa, is overvalued. The problem is, is that where else do you put your money? Because the bond market returns are very very low and property you know with the whole political thing and restricting foreigners it's maybe not that's the class you want to go into private equity is not very big in South Africa so we have the stock market and we have the only alternative is the money market but with our exchange rate getting hammered we kind of only have the stock market and so I think it is overvalued but the big thing is if you had to sell your shares in the stock market, where would you put it? There isn't really an alternative investment in South Africa at the moment. 
Uh, but that's just my opinion, um, and my opinion may be very wrong. So don't write that in the exam. Uh, write your own opinion. And then finally, let's just talk about the property market. Um, property market is influenced by three things. The occupation market, this makes um, it's quite, uh, makes a lot of sense. If there's a lot of people that want to live in the city, then the property prices will go up. So I live in Cape Town. A lot of people want to come to Cape Town to study because it's a beautiful city for tourism. So that increases the, the value of property. Then there's this thing known as the development cycle, and I'm seeing this in Cape Town now as well. So what happens is um, property, it's not like other things where if there's a high demand, um, you know, you can't just satisfy that supply. So if there's a high demand for chocolate, we simply import or we make more chocolate and we you know, fix that um, demand by increasing the supply. If we have the situation with Cape Town where there's such a big demand for property, you know, Cape Town is kind of small. It's got the sea on the one side and it's got a big mountain, Cortebo Mountain, on the other side. So it's very restricted, space is very small, and so we cannot meet the supply. So what has to happen is they have to build these massive apartment blocks. But they make these massive apartment blocks, so there's a big, big demand here. It takes a few years, maybe a year or two, to build this massive apartment block. But then that over supplies the market and therefore the property prices drop then. So again, it's it's kind of confusing. I'm not probably doing this justice in this video, but the development cycle, the fact that there's that lag um, does kind of stuff up the property market as far as it doesn't go smoothly, you know, it wobbles around. And then of course there's the investment market. People who you know don't want to invest in the stock market they might look at the property market in order to make their money there and that determines or this depends on various things how the equity markets doing the bond exchange rate overseas you can see there's a lot to be said about each of these three things yeah um, and then there's also always the key factors with property is you know with economic growth and real interest rates you know what do investors demand to get back for taking the risk by investing in property and yeah, um, I think yeah, we don't want to go too much over time in this video, but let's finally speak about this. The inelastic supply of property magnifies the impact of the factors on the overall property values. And that's basically what I was just talking about um, above, but let's just go through it quickly. So the time required to develop properties is quite long. Okay, why? Because you need to get permission, space is limited, um, you have to get architectural design, it takes time to raise the funds, all these type of things. Location also becomes a bit of an issue because if the area is going bad, you don't want to invest in it because you can't just pick up a building and move it. Transaction costs are high because you need lawyers, estate agents, uh, engineers, all these various people involved when it comes to building a building and then with selling it. You know, the engineer has to make sure, okay, no, this building's fine to be sold and all this type of stuff. And finally, you know, the segmented market. So you have a market for students who want to buy a certain type of property. And this will be very different to, say, a company that wants to build a factory or needs a factory. They're both property, but one's residential, one's industrial, and then you also have commercial and you have, you know, hotels. So there's lots of different types of property markets within the market. And some may go up while others go down. They to have a little bit of um, influence on each other. But again, that is another massive topic in its own. So yeah, in this video, we've we've just touched the surface of you know the property market, the equity market, the bond market, and I mean interest rates, this kind of determines the money market. And if you've seen my earlier videos, these are kind of the four main areas: money, bonds, um, equity, and property. But yeah, that is the economic influence on investment markets. It's a, it's a bit of a short chapter, but don't take it lightly. The stuff here is important, and it's important to think it through. Thanks, guys, for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Cheers.